Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is GE Healthcare. No growth and no mention. So, I just finished listening to the audiobook of Jeff Immelt, who was the CEO of GE, and he wrote the book, his autobiography, Hot Seat, his memoirs, that came out in February of 2021. Okay, so relatively recently. All right, now, he was the CEO of GE from 2001 to 2017 for 16 years. That's a long time. Of course, Jack Welch was before him, but as he says in the book, the average tenure of a CEO in corporate America now is only five years, and he was there for over three times as long. And his stay there at GE was highly controversial. Now, before, this particularly pertains to healthcare, because before he became CEO of all of GE, he was the CEO of GE Healthcare. So he actually ran GE's healthcare business. And GE is the third largest med device, med, medical device maker in the world. So number one is Medtronic. Number two is Johnson & Johnson. I mean, they're a huge pharmaceutical company, but they're actually a huge medical device company. Well, and number three is GE Healthcare. So like, if GE Healthcare was its own medical device company, it would be the third largest in the world. And he used to run it before becoming the CEO. Now, GE Healthcare is having problems. So in 2010, its revenue was $16.9 billion. In 2020, 10 years later, its revenue was $18 billion. That is a compounded annual growth rate, COGR, as sometimes called, of 0.69%. What's that called? That's called zero growth. Zero, oh, zero. It has not grown in 10 years. Jeff Immelt makes no mention of GE Healthcare after he becomes CEO. He's like, yeah, I ran the business, then I became CEO. Then like, doesn't mention it again. Talks about a gazillion other things, doesn't talk about GE Healthcare. Now, let's put that in comparison to Medtronic, the largest medical device maker. They grew at a 7% compounding annual growth. Okay, so over 700% more than what GE Healthcare is doing. Now, and not only that, but in 2021, GE actually sold its biopharma division of GE Healthcare, which was actually growing at 25%, probably the only part of GE Healthcare that was growing. They sold it to Danaher for $21 billion. So here you have a division within GE that has flat growth, and they sold off the fastest growing part of it. Like, what is going on? Okay, so Jeff Immel, by the way, this book is awesome. I highly encourage you to read it. He's not making any money off this book. He's going to donate it all to charity. Now, he you got to pay attention to books when they're written by powerful people who are, like, retired or, like, no longer there, right? Because what do they do? They're very forthright and honest. And I would... I would argue here that Jeff Immelt has written a very honest book. He tells you a whole bunch of things that when he was still the CEO of GE, he probably would have said them. But, so let's listen to him. What does he say? He, look, he says, look, the business model of GE ran on two things. One, it ran on GE Capital, which was half of GE's revenue when he became the CEO. What is GE Capital? It was a bank. That's all they did. They just borrowed money, so they, they, they sold bonds, and they borrowed billions and billions of dollars, and then they lent it out. It was a bank, okay? But the only difference was is that the PDE ratio of GE Capital was much higher because GE was this technology industrial company, so they had a much higher PE ratio than a traditional bank. And so what happened? What happened was the financial crisis of 2008, 2009, which decimated GE Capital, it basically put GE Capital like under the total like micromanagement of the Federal Reserve, and what did it turn into? It turned into a horrible, it turned into a horrible business. And so GE essentially sold off almost all of GE Capital. And like the vast majority of Jeff Immelt's time as CEO of GE was unwinding GE Capital. So you just know that General Electric, light bulbs, refrigerators, blah, 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 it was essentially half a bank. And it was one of the largest banks in the world on its own. And they unwound it. 
Okay, number two, on the industrial side, in other words, GE Healthcare, right, their big things is they make CT scanners, they make MRI machines, they make ultrasound machines, they make ventilators, right, so lots of imaging and machines, right. So, the entire industrial model for GE was to sell the machines at cost. They also make jet engines, they also make uh, electric turbines for power plants, all the stuff they make. They basically sell it at cost. They sell it for the amount that it costs to make them. But they make all their money off the subsequent service contracts for the machines that they sell. The maintenance and the repairs. That's where GE makes all of its industrial money. It doesn't, it doesn't make it off selling the locomotive. It makes it off of servicing the locomotive. It doesn't make it off of selling the CT scanner. It makes it off of servicing the CT, CT scanner. Aha! This brings us up to a major problem for GE's business model, and that is the issue of planned obsolescence. So in other words, let's say GE wanted to make a better CT scanner that didn't need repair. That totally cuts into their revenue and their profit. Their business margin is not set up to create better machines, better locomotives, better airplane engines that don't need service and maintenance and repair. He actually started an initiative called GE Digital to create the Internet of Things for GE devices, actually so they could be repaired and serviced in a more efficient fashion. And guess what? His organization is actually revolted against him. And they said, well, Jeff, this is how we make all of our money. We can't make better machines that don't need as much maintenance, because if we do, we won't make any money. So guess what they did? They ditched. After years and years of trying to expand GE Digital, they ditched it. It no longer exists. So, let that be a, a, a message to you, that when we talk about things, just know that the underlying revenue model, the underlying economics of the business tends to win. Now that's very true in healthcare, right? Fee for service. We like to talk about patient centeredness. We like to talk about prevention. But the underlying economic business model of what generates money ultimately, usually wins. Now, let's talk about this in the framework of G. I mean, GE's stock had just did horrible over Jeff's uh, Jeff Immelt's tenure there. He admits it. He tried his best. Look, honestly. Given what Jeff Immel had to go through at GE, there's probably no one else on the planet who could have done as good a job as he did. But at the end of the day, GE's market capitalization as it stands today, here in August of 2021, it's about $116 billion. Now, just think about if they had could they could have done something to grow GE healthcare. They could have, but they didn't. Now, there are other healthcare companies that have happened since Jeff Immel became CEO and subsequently left. For example, Health Catalyst does tons of software and analytics for hospital systems. Their market capitalization is $2.7 billion. Didn't exist when Jeff Immel started. He could have bought them. Teladoc, market capitalization, $22.8 billion. Doing virtual visits. Didn't exist when Jeff Immel started GE. He could have bought them. Viva Solutions, they do cloud computing for uh, bio, the biopharma industry. They have a $50 billion market capitalization. Found in 2007, didn't exist before, GE could have bought them. So here are all these organizations that are sucking up tons of investor money, investor money that is not going to GE. And here you have a large organization that I would argue, because Jeff Emma was dealing with so much when it came to the collapse of the airline industry after 9-11 with their GE engines, when it came to the collapse of the financial markets, when it came to GE Capital during the Great Recession, and here you have a huge division within GE that has been totally stagnant and has totally missed the boat when it comes to like the future of healthcare. So what's my point? My point is, is that a lot of very large bureaucratic organizations, they just can't break from the past. They can talk about innovate, being as innovative as they want. They can't break from the past. And that doesn't just occur, uh, hold true for GE, but we look at hospital systems being unable to break themselves from fee for service. We look at PBMs unable to break themselves from charging commissions uh, from pharmaceutical companies to turn around and then sell uh, access 
to employers. They just can't break from their old business models. So what's my point? My point is, is that if you want to work to change healthcare, you probably don't want to work in a big established healthcare company. Because chances are that that big established healthcare company is so married to their business model that they can't, they just can't break from it. So again, they can talk as much as they want, but it's just so hard for them to change. It's probably not going to happen. So okay, hats off to Jeff Emma. I really appreciate his honesty and his openness in writing this book. It gives us a ton of insight, and that's the point I want to make today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.